Feline diabetes used to mean a time and financial commitment, but things are changing. In this video, I'll chat about what diabetes is, signs to watch for, including one you may not be familiar with, traditional versus new diabetic treatments, how to monitor your diabetic cat, and bonus, things you can do to help your cat go into diabetic remission. That means no more insulin. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Ah. Here's a fun fact to get us started. Do you know what diabetes mellitus literally means? Diabetes means to pass through. The excessive thirst and urinations of diabetics, that's like water is just passing through their bodies. And mellitus, that means sweet. Do you see where we're going with this? Back in the day, diabetics were diagnosed by tasting their urine and noticing the sweetness from the extra sugar. For obvious reasons, that evolved pretty quickly and it was noticed that a diabetic urine was sticky to the touch and ants were attracted to it because of the extra sugar. Thankfully, we've come a long way since then. When we say diabetes, we are pretty much always referring to diabetes mellitus, not the rare condition diabetes insipidus, which personally, I have never seen in a cat. Think of diabetes as a metabolic roller coaster. Your cat cannot move sugar or glucose from the blood into their cells, which causes a whole bunch of issues. Normally, your cat moves sugar from the blood into the cells with the hormone insulin, which is made by the pancreas. If your cat isn't making enough insulin or their insulin isn't working correctly, sugar starts to build up within the blood. That extra sugar pulls more water into the bloodstream, which is removed by their kidneys as urine. All of that water loss in the urine makes your cat feel dehydrated, which tells them to drink more. That's why diabetic cats drink a lot and urinate a lot. And since they can't use that sugar in the blood, that's why they often lose weight while eating more. Until the blood sugars are normalized, this cycle will continue. But here's the surprise. Sometimes there are no symptoms at all. That's why I recommend wellness screening, including blood and urine tests, starting at the age of five. I've diagnosed quite a few young, healthy cats with diabetes whose owners reported no symptoms at all, simply by running wellness blood and urine screens. Why did this happen to my cat? The truth is, we don't always know. And estimates say one in every 100 to 200 cats has diabetes. Genetics plays a role. Some cats don't make enough insulin. Maybe there's an issue with a pancreas, or your cat has a rare autoimmune disease where the body attacks the cells that makes insulin. That's known as type one diabetes. Your cat may have enough insulin, but something in the body is preventing it from working correctly. And this is known as type two diabetes or insulin resistance. Medications like steroids can do it. Underlying diseases like hyperthyroidism or pancreatitis can do it. Obesity can do it. 61% of cats are overweight or obese, and that can increase the risks. If you need some tips on how to feed your cat or get weight off your cat, check out my weight loss video, 10 extra kibbles equals one pound of fat. So these are some things that can predispose your cat to diabetes, but they are by no means a guarantee your cat will become diabetic. I have plenty of patients that are obese that are not diabetic and plenty of lean patients that are. I have many cats on steroids for years that are not diabetic. If they should happen to become diabetic, they are usually pretty easy to manage, often requiring lower insulin doses than others. It usually doesn't matter if your cat has type one diabetes or type two diabetes. The only thing that matters is does your cat respond to treatment? And traditionally, that has been with insulin injections. Both type one and type two diabetics respond to insulin. I say traditionally because in 2023, the treatment for diabetic cats is changing. More on that in a little bit. To make a diabetes diagnosis, we need a very high blood sugar and lots of sugar in the urine. It would also be helpful if your cat was showing symptoms relating to diabetes. But be careful, stress can spike your cat's blood sugar very high, sometimes up to 400. If your cat has a high blood sugar and there's no sugar in the urine, it might just be stress. It takes a few hours for that extra sugar in their blood, say from a vet visit or a car ride, to spill over into their urine. You may have seen commercials about controlling your A1C. I also use a similar test called fructosamine, which tells me your cat's average blood sugar over the previous one to two weeks. This test can help distinguish between stress and an early or pre-diabetic when a diabetes diagnosis is not a slam dunk. There may be some other changes. Your cat's ALT liver enzyme may be elevated and you may notice some electrolyte changes, but these are not specific to diabetes. 
So why do we treat diabetes anyways? Uncontrolled diabetics will develop a condition known as diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA. This is a very serious and potentially fatal condition where your cat breaks down their fat stores for energy because they cannot use the sugar that's in their blood. When this happens, the blood becomes acidic and you start to notice ketones in the blood and urine. These cats are sick and require hospitalization for days in the ICU. The goal of treatment is to normalize your cat's blood sugar to prevent DKA, which will eventually happen. I always begin with medications because that is the best guarantee your cat will not develop DKA. I also discuss diet changes and weight loss, but these alone cannot sufficiently treat diabetes. So what diet changes do I recommend? Canned food, canned food, canned food. High protein, low carbohydrate diets are what cats are built for, and these diets can help manage your cat's diabetes. Prescription, veterinary, diabetic diets fall into this category. They are generally higher in protein, lower in carbohydrates, some add fiber for increased glucose management, and some are lower in fat to help reduce calories. We know obesity can result in insulin resistance, so getting your cat to a healthy weight can increase their insulin sensitivity. And the best way to get a few pounds off your cat? Increase canned food and start cutting out the dry food. Some recommend meal feeding around the time you are giving your cat their insulin. There's not much evidence to support this. However, I do like meal feeding for a couple of reasons. The first is you can better monitor your cat. If your cat doesn't eat breakfast, you're calling your vet sooner rather than later. The second, meal feeding allows for better portion control to get your cat to a better weight so you can manage their diabetes better. Traditional feline diabetes treatment has been with insulin. When I first began my career, I used a lot of human insulins. In my experience, these cats were difficult to manage and these insulins didn't offer great long-term control. I'd often see hypoglycemic events where the blood sugar drops to a dangerously low level, often resulting in lethargy, tremors, seizures, and sometimes death. Then came recombinant DNA insulins like ProZinc, which is an FDA-approved insulin for the use in cats, and Glargine or Lantus, and these insulins really changed the game. I usually start with ProZinc insulin for a couple of reasons. One, it's FDA approved for use in cats, and two, it's a middle of the road insulin. If that insulin doesn't work or I need a longer acting insulin, that's when I reach for Glargine or Lantus. And these are generally the only two insulins I use anymore. Another big perk, I generally don't see symptoms relating to having a low blood sugar that were somewhat common with the other insulins. The vast majority of cats require insulin injections twice a day, 12 hours apart. Surprisingly, many cat owners report their cat reminds them when their insulin is due, especially if they're late. It is rare to manage diabetes in cats with a once a day insulin injection. And here's a quick reminder if you are currently using insulin. Insulin is a protein, so if you shake that bottle, it won't work after a while. You might have noticed this towards the end of the bottle, the insulin doesn't work as well. Getting a fresh bottle usually solves the problem. Most insulin needs to be refrigerated, but make sure you follow the recommendations on the packaging. Here's a quick tip. Put that bottle in the fridge out of the way so it doesn't get bumped or knocked over. Always use a new needle. Just after one use, the needle is already dull. I don't recommend giving insulin under the skin on the back of the neck. That's where we vets give most of our injections and potentially that is the area with least absorption. Instead, give it on the sides or the belly and rotate those areas. If you are using insulin, monitoring is key. To know if the insulin dose is correct, I generally recommend a BG curve where you're taking blood sugar readings every three to four hours over a 12 hour period. I generally also recommend running a fructosamine at the same time to help confirm or dispute the BG curve results. In a stable diabetic, I'm doing a BG curve every three months and this can be done in the hospital or at home. The Human Freestyle Libre can be used to monitor your cat's glucose in tissue under the skin for 14 days. It is not approved for use in cats. Ideally, you'll be scanning the device with your phone every eight hours to capture the data. This can obtain much more information than a traditional BG curve. They can get readings when your cat is not stressed, 
and monitor trends that fall outside your vet's normal business hours. Sometimes they can be unreliable and they can detach from your cat since they are designed for human skin. New Feline Diabetes Treatment SGLT2 inhibitors. In 2023, SGLT2 inhibitors, medications that have been used in human medicine for over a decade, became available to treat diabetes in cats. You may have heard of them. Sinvelgo, which is a once a day liquid, and Bexacat, which is a once a day tablet. These sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors block the uptake of sugar in your cat's kidneys. As a result, your cat urinates out more sugar, which in turn helps stabilize their blood sugar. There are so many advantages here. They avoid a needle. They are administered once a day as opposed to twice a day insulin injections. You get to choose between a liquid or a tablet. They avoid hypoglycemic or low blood sugar events. And potentially there is less monitoring when compared with a diabetic cat on insulin. As with anything, there are cautions and risks. The FDA has issued a conditional or black box warning when using these medications. They are only to be used in newly diagnosed diabetic cats. If your cat has had insulin in the past, you cannot use these medications. There also can't be anything else wrong with your cat. No other medical issues like pancreatitis, kidney disease, or liver disease. No ketones in the urine. The blood ketone beta-hydroxybutyrate needs to be below a certain number to start this medication. You have to check the ketone levels in the blood and urine once a week for two weeks after starting the medication. This is in addition to checking the blood and urine sugar levels. If the ketones are above a certain number, you have to stop the medication and switch to insulin. It's also recommended to check these levels one and two months after starting the treatment. Since this medication is new to us, more research is needed and many questions about these medications are still unknown. As we learn more about this medication in cats, recommendations and follow-ups may change. The scariest part about this medication, it may hide diabetic ketoacidosis. A vet may not pick up on this because your cat's blood sugar is normal, unless you specifically tell them that your cat is on an SGLT2 inhibitor. This usually occurs within the first two weeks after starting treatment. That's why the initial frequent monitoring is so necessary to find these early DKA cats. If this does occur, you have to stop the medication and switch to insulin. The ultimate goal is diabetic remission. One of the best parts of my job is when I get to say your cat is in remission, they don't need insulin anymore. Unfortunately, as far as we know, SGLT2 medications are forever. The ways I put cats into remission are feeding wet food 100%, getting them to an ideal weight, and extracting diseased teeth. Feline diabetes is manageable, but it does require frequent monitoring and communication with your veterinary team. If time or finances are an issue, I do have a tough conversation with families. DKA is not a good way to go. Sometimes euthanasia is the most compassionate choice. The good news is diabetic cats can live long, healthy lives and newer treatment options like SGLT2 inhibitors make treatment easier and more affordable. So if you are feeling overwhelmed, take a deep breath, you got this. If you learned something or enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video.